Welcome to another edition of Talking Hoops. Mark Kern joined by just David Casillo today. Dave, playoffs finally got underway. Not a ton of surprises, but if there was one big surprise, what was it? I'd say the big surprise to me was Cuyahoga Falls beating Ellett uh, in the first uh, sectional semifinal game. Uh, Cuyahoga Falls was uh, the third worst team, I believe, in the Canton Copley Blended District. And Ellett was the five seed. And it was really shocking. I mean, Cuyahoga Falls had a, a, not a great year at all. Ellett really looked like it was solidifying itself in the Akron City Series. But um, the Black Tigers won by about uh, 13, 15 points. So uh, props to them. Definitely. Cuyahoga Falls, they do play some pretty good teams throughout yeah. the regular season. So that probably definitely help there. Who was the biggest performance of the week? A lot of good individual performances. I got to go with Armin Perry of Bedford. I mean, he had 30 points against Willoughby South on Saturday. He's a guy that uh, we had Coach Priola on the podcast on Wednesday, and he was saying, well, we need Armin Perry to step up. He's our best outside shooter. He's our most reliable outside shooter. And he really did, and he's the reason that Bedford's still playing now, and he's the X Factor against East Tech this week, too. But he has, and he, they've played some very good teams as well, and I think they won't be scared, definitely, of East Tech. East Tech's playing very well mm -hmm. as of late, too, and I think that could be a very, very good matchup. Mm -hmm. If that's not your best matchup in this district semifinals, what is? Well, it's hard to look past Lorraine Brunswick. It's just uh, a game that everyone's sort of been talking about since Brunswick made the decision to put themselves with Lorraine um, at the district seating meeting. And um, it's just two teams with clashing styles. You got Lorraine, they, they run and gun, they play exciting basketball. Uh, Brunswick's like, uh, you know, a University of Virginia. They're going to really bore you. They're going to uh, really get the game slowed down and play good defense, and uh, it'll be a crazy crowd. Two teams have good fan bases, and I think it's going to be a great night. Tempo will definitely be the key in that game, as you said. Two complete opposite teams there. Another game I'm kind of looking forward to is Glenville against Garfield Heights. Glenville, a team that's really come on at the end of the yeah. year, almost pulled off a stunning upset against East Tech. What, could they, what kind of matchups do they present for Garfield? Well, Garfield Heights has got to watch out because Glenville is a really improving basketball team. Uh, they're playing well under Coach Holt. They've got a senior point guard, Roy Hatchett, and they have so many good young players that are, you know, they're not really freshmen anymore. At this time of the year, you have so much experience. Uh, you're sort of like early sophomores almost. And uh, they beat Brush, they beat Kenston, and they're a team that, I don't know, Garfield Heights is a really good team. It's going to take Glenville's best effort, but this isn't like, uh, you know, a 116 matchup yeah. here. Are there any other games that kind of stick out to you? Obviously, you talked about Lorraine Brunswick. Anything else you're excited for? Uh, you mentioned East Tech Bedford. That'll be a good game. Uh, two teams uh, that play exciting basketball. Um, we've got uh, some good games over in um, the Brexville, uh, Broadview Heights district. Uh, one that just is intriguing to me, St. Edward versus Lakewood. <laughs> I mean, these two teams never really play. They're just a couple blocks away from each other. I think Elyria and Bury Mid Park will be a really, really good game. Uh, and then let's not look past uh, tomorrow night. We've got Beachwood and Warrensville, which has turned out to be a, a good rivalry uh, with the way these teams have uh, picked up recently. Definitely. And last year they played. What's, what's different with both of these teams that maybe Beachwood could beat them this year? What, what do you think is the key in that game? Well, Beachwood needs a healthy Macy Daly. Uh, the, he's a player where um, he was the leading scorer and he got hurt. He hurt his foot. And now uh, if Beachwood's going to win, they need him to play really good. He has the potential to be the best player on the floor, but mm -hmm. I do think Warrensville Heights backcourt of Yuvari Hall and Brandon Peters will be a little too much to handle for them. All right, and one thing that draws basketball fans definitely to this time of the year is upsets. You love to root for the underdog. What top seed could really be on upset alert in this next game? Well, there's, there's definitely a handful. Uh, but in terms of the immediate future next game, I'm going to go with Keystone, the number one seed, uh, playing number three, Holy Name. Holy Name is just a team that has really, really picked it up in the second half of the season. Keystone plays um, in – the Patriots is just not as tough as the league Holy Name plays. And they're mm -hmm. playing, you know, Central Catholic, VSJ, St. Thomas Aquinas, and two games against each. And Holy Name has played a difficult schedule. They've got a, a transcendent player in Dwayne Cohill, and uh, I really think that they are going to be advancing over Keystone. Anytime you have the best player on the floor, as a name. Yeah, absolutely. So that should be definitely, definitely an exciting game. But I want to go more maybe back to that Lake, Lakewood-St. Edward game. As mm -hmm. you said, very intriguing. Lakewood can really shoot from three-point line. Do they have enough to potentially pull the upset as they did last year against a very good North Royalton team? They have the intangibles. You know, when you look at how do you upset a higher seeded team? You shoot well from three, you come in, you play with no fear, you think you're going to win the game, and you have good coaching. And that's what Lakewood has. Could 
Lake Edward play its, uh, <laughs> Lake Edward. <laughs> could Lake Wood play its best game of the year and still lose to St. Edward? Yes, they could. But um, Lakewood is going to play exciting basketball. It's going to be a good environment, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. One thing they'll have to do is play defense, and Coach Argento has not been thrilled with his defense yeah. at times. So that'll definitely be interesting. And now we're actually joined by a coach who figures to be playing deep into the playoffs, and that's Coach Babe Kwasniak of VASJ. Coach, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? All right, Coach, you guys played a brutal regular season schedule. So many tough games. Looking back now, how has that schedule truly prepared you for the playoffs? Who's this, Mark? Yes, this is Mark. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't know if it was you or Jay Bill, so I was getting <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't introduce yourself. Um, hopefully it gets us ready when it matters most, Mark. I mean, um, I mean, I think I've said this a couple times. I don't know how good we are, but, uh, yeah, I would put us – I would put the schedule we played up, up against anybody. We really played some – some of the giants in high school basketball, not only around Cleveland, but, but around the country. So, Coach, it's uh, Dave Casillo here at Cleveland.com. We'll, we'll talk about um, your immediate game tonight. You're playing Elyria Catholic. Uh, when you look at them, you see them on tape. Uh, what stands out about them? Well, they're, they're, they're 16 and 6 for a reason, Dave. You know what I mean? Um, you know, their, their schedule is kind of indicative of, of who they are. And, and we've... Uh, you know, the good thing is that I think we've played some teams that are, that are probably similar in their, in their style. and They're going to try to spread us out and, and, and they make shots. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but at this time of year, you're, you know, there, there are not going to be many surprises. I and mean, hopefully during the season you play, you play, you play teams that are, that are similar to what you're going to face now, and, and I think that's, that's the case here. Hey, Castillo, side note, I just I read your Twitter was saying, you know, how, how, how you haven't seen the sun since November. Stop acting like you're coming from uh, Jacksonville, Florida, my man. I mean, you know, last, last time I checked, Philadelphia is not a destination, uh, it, it's attraction good. in this country. Uh, I agree. It, it's not as good as our producer Cam in L.A., but uh, <laughs> it was just nice to see it today in general. But. Other than Rocky Balboa and uh, Dave Castillo, I don't think anybody's, you know, going to spend spring break in Philadelphia. Okay? <laughs> I mean... I'm coming from Kansas, so I don't have much room to talk there either. But, Coach, obviously you guys have so many great players on your team, but can you just talk about what Brian Parker has meant to your program these past four years? Well, well you know, I'll say this. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think uh, you look at a storied program and, and, and we've had five state championships, and, and I don't know how many, how many, you know, I think maybe, maybe nine, nine folks have played professional basketball. Um, you know, from, from Delangelo, St. Joseph, or, or St. Joseph, I should say. Um, and Brian's going to go down, um, hopefully, you know, knock on wood if we win a couple more games there as, as the all-time win winner. Um, he has won the most games of, of anyone that's ever won mm. or the uniform. And, and he's actually played in, a, in 102 games now. Uh, I, I should say I've coached him in 102 games. And, and, you know, a little bit of that is due to the fact that he play more games now. Uh, you know, the 22 game schedule, we didn't this year, but you play more games, you know, than they did in the past. But, you know, you have to have deep playoff runs for, for that to happen. So, you know, I think Brian's been kind of synonymous with, uh, you know, with, 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 with winning. And I, and I think that'll, that'll continue, you know, when he goes to college at Maris. He's just a, he's just a, he's a really good, he's a really good basketball player. And, and uh, you know, that, that's not going to change the next level. Coach, uh, you have really had a rarity the last two seasons playing with the exact same starting five the last two years. Uh, what is that experience like as a coach, and um, how do you uh, continue to get them motivated day in and day out? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't do anything as far as – I think that's just it. I think, I think when, you have, when you have guys that have been around, um, you know, as you said um, – you know, they've, they're kind of self-motivated, especially in our case because, you know, we lost in the state championship last year. So it's not like I have to remind them that that happened. I mean, they're, they're cognizant of it. They know it. And uh, it's, it's, it's a special group, you know, I mean, uh, of, our, of our eight seniors. Their, their grade point average is a, is a 3.78. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about them. I mean, I don't know, you know, we caught lightning in a bottle or, it's just a, it's just a great group, and not just basketball players, but but, but human beings. I mean, you I, I really don't believe that you're as strong as your weakest link. You know, you're as strong as your, you know, you're as strong as your leaders. And 
you know, we don't we don't have one leader. We have we have multiple leaders, and uh, so that's just kind of what this group's meant to us. And and you're right, Dave. It's been it's been really cool. You know, you know, you don't get that. Not many not many coaches at any level, um, even the, even the pros, right, get a chance to coach like the same guys uh, two years in a row. And uh, for the most part, you know, our core of guys have stayed intact. Especially when you look in this day and age where you know most. You know, kids kids transfer. You know, mm. if they're not if they're not getting the playing time they want, or you know, they, they switch they switch now frequently. They switch AAU teams and they switch, you know, they switch high schools. And it's like in, the, in this day and age of free agency. You know, if they don't like it, they just kind of go kind of go the path of least resistance. We've had a lot of guys that have sacrificed individual, you know, individual accolades you know, to to be together. So that's something I really appreciate. Coach, last week um, it's the sectional week and it's all home playoff sites. But now it's you know we get the neutral sites, we get the uh, the big atmospheres of the crowds. Uh, what is it like going through uh, this week and then everything going forward from now? Well, the most important thing is that you know we get to play at the home of Sonny Johnson, Dave. So normally you know normally Sonny puts on a really good spread. I, 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 like he takes credit for it. He has nothing to do with it. But normally he's got some really good cheese and crackers. Over at, over at Garfield Heights, uh, you know I'm not I'm not a big fan of the new, you know of the new um, of the new rule we play sectional game at home. I kind of I guess I'm a kind of traditionalist. I like it the old way. I, I, you know, I kind of feel like if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, you know I kind of like having everybody at one place so you can scout. And but um, you know it worked out for us this year because we had senior night, as you guys all well know, and we got our tails kicked by Akron Big B. So it's kind of good to have one last home game. Um, you know, with your seniors. But to answer the question, I think this gives you the turn to feel now because now, you know, everybody's at one neutral site and, you know, it's that time of year now where, um, you know, the scores are going to get closer because you're going to play much better competition and, and you know, there's not going to be many secrets. And it's just, you know, I'm biased, but I think it's, I think it's one of the best sporting events there is, man. It's, it's one and done. It's not the, the, the best teams don't necessarily win. You know, it's a team that plays the best that night. All right, Coach, before we let you go, speaking of the tournament, obviously the NCAA's tournament's coming up. Kentucky's undefeated. Do you think anybody can beat them? Yes. Do you have a team? Uh, uh, you know, you all, shoot, how about how Wisconsin look? Yeah, I think Wisconsin can beat them. I think Virginia can beat them. I mean, yes, I think they can, they can be beat. Um, I, I, think, I think they probably will get beat, too. Uh, but but I'm, not, I'm, I'm the worst when it comes to predicting those types of things, so. <laughs> All right, Coach, thank you very much for joining us, and best of luck in the playoffs. All right, guys, thanks for having me. All right, and that was co thanks co to Coach Babe Kwasniak for taking some time to join us. And, Dave, I mean, when you look at them, obviously Beachwood, Warrensville Heights in their district, they're the prohibitive favorite. Could one of those two teams give them any kind of game? Warrensville Heights really – Played with them for over three quarters last year. Yeah, I think if it's any team, it's going to be Warrensville. I mean, you were at that game mm -hmm. where Warrensville played St. Vincent St. Mary, and Warrensville was in that game yeah. and, you know, had a chance to potentially win that in the fourth quarter. And um, Warrensville sort of got the reputation this year where they can't really finish the job. They lost that game. They lost twice to Bedford, uh, twice to Lorraine, and where it all sort of fell apart in the fourth quarter. So it just, for them, it's about completing uh, a full effort. And the Beachwood, potentially, that could be the game that against another quality team that could get them that win, that could give them the confidence. Obviously, we talk a lot about Division One, Division Two, but when we get down to Division Three and Division Four, you look at Division Four. Richmond Heights played in a regional final mm -hmm. last year. Do they have the same team that could maybe make another run like that? They do. They, this is sort of the uh, the the uh, the grind for them has begun. They actually played a really close game against Trinity in their last game where they only won by seven points, which uh, Richmond Heights should be winning that game by more. They're, they're more talented. And now uh, they've got to survive a district where they might potentially play Mogador or Cuyahoga Heights if they can win tonight. And both of those are quality teams. Richmond Heights has beaten Cuyahoga Heights earlier. Um, so Richmond Heights, got to watch out for them. Cornerstone Christian, got to watch out for them. Those are probably the two best uh, chances we have for a local team to get to the regional level. Yep, and Dave, it's time now. The tournament is definitely started. Teams are going to be pulling upsets, everything. Stay tuned to Cleveland.com for coverage throughout the entire playoffs. Come back next Monday where we'll have a lot to talk about through district finals and stuff like that. So for Dave Casillo, I'm Mark Kern.